Kia ora class. Um, as you know, next week, next Friday, vlog two is due. Um, and it's we're coming up to the end of, of module two as well. Um, for some of you, module two, uh, it's been a bit of a tricky time um, with with you know, other commitments and all those sorts of things. But in the midst of that, I want you to pause and have a think about what you've been learning um, as we've looked at the second module, as we've looked at some uh, Māori approaches to youth development. Now, there's obviously been a number of ways you've been engaging with that learning. Firstly, there was the workshop uh, back in late August. Um, there's been class, week-to-week -week class, um, over the last month, and also um, the Moodle activity. So there's been a variety of ways in which you've um, engaged with with Māori approaches to youth development um, and health promotion. Three questions I want you to think about <clears throat> as you put together Vlog 2. Firstly, as you've engaged with Module 2, what, what has stood out for you as you've heard about these new or interacted with these new um, Māori development um, models what stood out for you what's captured your um, attention captured your thinking for example for me um, just from when when Fire Josie was sharing at the Marae back in August I was really struck by actually how much I've got to learn in this area um, there was obviously the Whare Tapa Whā and Te whiki, um, those models that already familiar with, but there was a whole bunch of stuff that I just hadn't engaged with, and for me that was a real challenge. That um, I've got a bunch of learning to do in this space, so that's that's something that stood out for me. Something that's also stood out for me is is just the the importance of um, of, of proverbs and story in shaping um, Māori worldview. Obviously, there's heaps of other things. Why it's a um, and in a variety of other activities, but story and proverb have a real um, role to play, and I think that's really stuck out to me and something I want to explore some more, especially the role of story. So that's question one. What has stood out as you've engaged? Question number two, I want you to think about what you're unsure of, what um, what questions are emerging. What are you thinking, mm, that doesn't make sense, or no, I'm not quite there, I'm not sure what that model means or I'm not sure what Fire Josie was saying there. I'm not sure what Mark's on about there. So for me, something I'm unsure of um, around Māori youth development models is um, I, I'm finding the models that um, Fire Josie has put forward in Ngā Reanga, um, E Tupu E Rea and um, the Māori model, I'm finding them really interesting but I don't think I'm quite engaging with them um, in terms of a um, con uh, a framework that you can kind of do in practice really straightforwardly. For example, say Fari Tapa Far is so um, user friendly, and I'm not I'm I'm needing to work with these ones a bit more to see how they work and what their practice kind of application is. Which brings me to the last point: as you've looked at um, these models and also the stories and proverbs that we've considered, how might these inform your practice um, as you think about your own youth development practice or health promotion practice? How can these narratives, these stories, these models inform your practice? So for example, for me, I feel like the stories and the proverbs are a real um, um, area for exploration and um, I shared in class on Tuesday that um, I've been running a number of events recently and I've been using Māori narratives and stories to kind of shape them. For example, I um, ran a Matariki event, which was a real great opportunity for us to reflect on what Matariki is, how it applies to our lives, um, how, how we can become more reflective, how we can be people who are more grateful. So we used that, that Māori narrative as a way to um, reflect on our own journeys. Similarly, um, we want to do a Parihaka Peace Festival to explore another story, uh, another sort of ancestral story um, in November. So um, I'm thinking about the place of these in, in my own practice as um, my own youth development or, or community involvement. So those are the three questions. What has stood out as you've engaged with uh, Module 2? What are you unsure of still? And how might these inform your practice? Um, 
look forward to hearing what you've got to say about this particular module. Hey, thanks guys. Have a great weekend and all the best as you put forward, uh, put these together and also start getting assi assignment two ready. Kia ora.